Today, I'll be talking about the drift velocity equation. How do you derive an equation for the drift velocity? So here we're going to do it for a metal. So let us consider we have a metal conductor here. In a metal, there are ocean of electrons and the electrons move randomly without applying the potential difference. That means if there is no battery applied, the electrons move randomly and the net effective drift velocity is zero. But once we apply a potential difference or a battery, then what does a battery do? It provides a preferred direction. It sets up a preferred direction for the electrons to move in. That means it applies a force onto each electrons or each charge carriers. So here, this circle, the tiny circle, represents electrons, and this is a positive charged um, the positive terminal here. So this will attract electrons to this side here. So the electrons will start moving in this direction. But once the electrons are in motion, so there are many millions of electrons, so they collide with each other. So the, once they collide, some of them turns back. So the motion, the average velocity of the electrons will be, or in other words, the drift velocity will be the average velocity with which the electrons move. It's not like a free motion. So there are always collisions in between. Okay. So here, what do we assume? The electrons or the charge carriers has traveled the distance or the displacement here, the delta x, that's the net displacement in time, the delta t. So this delta x represents the displacement traveled by the many electrons which is the average and this in time delta t okay so once we know the displacement and the time then the average velocity this is the magnitude uh, given by the displacement divided by the time which is the delta x over delta t so the delta x will be now simply equal to the vd times delta t this is the average velocity and as I mentioned, the average velocity is also called the drift velocity of the charge carriers in a conductor. In this case, this is for the electrons. Okay, so, so far we know now the displacement in given time delta t. All right. So, the n, we assume the n is the charge carrier density. What does this mean? So, if you look at the copper or aluminum, they have the different conductivity. That means they conduct the electricity differently. If the same voltage is applied between a copper or let's say to the other extreme case, uh, um, let's say iron or even the plastic or a paper, the charge, the free charge carrier is significantly different for each of them. So the better conductor or a wonderful conductor will have a large charge carrier density. So this term, in fact, differences how good a conductor is. The larger the value of this N is, that means it's a better conductor. That's the one way of looking at it, okay? So the charge carrier density N is defined, the number of charge carrier divided by the volume Okay, how many charge carrier you have within a volume? The more the charge carriers have, the, the, the greater will be the charge carrier density. And what we assume here, the charge of each, char each charge carrier is Q. Q is the charge of each, let's say, electrons. Or it be ions, it could be due to the ions. Okay, so that's the magnitude of the charge of each charge carrier. Now our goal is, what is the charge that has traveled in this two segments here? In, or in this displacement, how many charges have crossed? How do we find out? 
so the delta q so i'm just going to write down here here the delta q is the the charges that has passed to this area so in order to know that what we need to know is the charge density n is the charge density what does this mean the charge per unit volume and then i'm going to multiply by the volume and times q q is the charge of each charge carrier see this is the charge per density the the number of charge carriers per unit volume and if i multiply by the volume then this will give us so this term here this term or this term let's say n times v the n times v will tell you the number of charge carriers number of charges charge carrier and if i multiply by the charge of each carrier then that is the total charges okay so now our goal is to find out what is the volume of this segment here the volume we know the cross section area so this one has a cross section area we call a the cross section area and we know this length here this is just like finding the volume of a cylinder it's exactly a cylinder here so how do you find the volume of a cylinder cross sectional area times the height or the length that's what we have done cross sectional area times the length okay so now we know the delta x here we already have gotten this delta x so let's plug this delta x into this equation here so the delta q n times a and the delta x will be v d times q here and i'm going to divide both sides by delta t so the delta q over delta t will be simply equal to this term divided by the delta t the delta t and delta t will cancel out and then the charge divided by the time will give you the average current so this is i already have talked about the average current so this is the average current by definition the rate of flow of charge is called the current is given by this term now what you see here that's a beautiful equation what you see here the charge it's the current the average current depends upon the charge density as i mentioned here um, if you have a conductor with a lot of charge density that means it will have a more current flowing through this one and it also depends upon the cross section area when i say cross section area the thicker a thicker the the wire is the more currents will be passing through this one or more charges will be flowing through this one which makes sense right if you have a bigger thicker wire that means the more current will be passing through it and q is the charge of each charge carrier and the vd is the, the drift velocity the average velocity with which the electrons move so this is the equation for the drift velocity or it is a relation between the drift velocity and the average current here all right so current this current is a scalar quantity it does not have a direction although it we say it is a direction but it is a scalar quantity although we say that the current has a direction and the reason is the two currents cannot be at vectorically okay so if a current is passing this way and a current is passing this way the resultant will not pass through this way okay so the current is a scalar quantity although it does have a direction it can just flow along the wire but it does not have a direction here so current is a scalar quantity and the unit of current is ampere okay so this is the equations uh, or relation between the drift velocity and the average current so if you have any questions on uh, on this topic let me know so this is it for the drift velocity equation if you have any questions write down your questions in the comment section below and do not forget to like share and subscribe the channel thank you